Uh, welcome back to um, a research pro proposal, a research proposal, writing your research proposal uh, with Cleo. And we are in our second week. And in our second week, we are going to talk or we are going to begin uh, the actual uh, research proposal, uh, which is writing the background to the study. Uh, please take note that these are, uh, videos are exclusively uh, a, on YouTube. I won't be posting them on our WhatsApp group. Um, uh, the reason being we want to promote the YouTube uh, channel. We want more uh, people to subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. So to this week, yes, we'll be talking about uh, a background to the study, which is the next thing uh, for us to write after the, the introduction. I'm also very impressed to, uh, to tell you that we have got uh, uh, some students that have already finished their introduction and uh, i'm so happy uh, some of those introductions they are very uh, focused and very directed and i think uh, we are it's really working so let's talk let's quickly dive into the uh, background of the study and uh, a well-written background uh, will give the study a context uh, and uh, prompt the readers to read the rest of your of your thesis or the rest of your of your proposal so you need to make sure that uh, the um, the, the, the background of the study is actually uh, well uh, written. And over these, uh, uh, over these years, uh, or the time that I have been helping uh, most students, uh, they struggle with writing the uh, background to the research, uh, uh, to, the, to the study. You know, it's always an issue. Even myself, at one point, I also did not know what information to write there. Uh, but yes, but with the time as you go, you you end up knowing what you need to 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 do uh, when you are asked to write a, a background to the study. And the also uh, most important thing or the most difficult thing, especially for the beginners, uh, people that are writing uh, their research proposal from the first time, is to distinguish between the problem and the literature review. And not only and literature review, also to distinguish between uh, the background uh, background to the to the to the introduction. So to distinguish between background and the introduction and background and literature review, most students uh, find it very challenging. And we are going to talk about that uh, in this session as we go. So thank you so much for, 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 for uh, liking, uh, for watching, and uh, for subscribing to the YouTube channel. Uh, here we are going to talk a lot of, uh, a lot of things. Um, then, so the way forward, how are we going to move? So in this presentation, is one is, is going to be a very long presentation. So first, I'm going to talk about the function uh, of a background to the study. What does it uh, serves to do? Then how does it differ uh, from the introduction? And where do you place it in your research proposal? And the, the structure uh, of the background, uh, background of the study, um, the structure, how should you structure it? Um, then, of course, making it engaging avoiding the common errors, uh, how it differs uh, from the literature review, as I actually said, that we have got a problem of students failing to distinguish between uh, a background to the study and the introduction, and also uh, failing to distinguish uh, background to the study uh, to literature review, and we are going to be doing that here. Then, of course, we are going to do a writing of the background to the study. That's the actual writing. Uh, what I'm expecting you to be doing this week is what I'm going to be talking about under writing the background to the study. And of course, we'll talk about proofreading. It's very important to make sure that your work is well written, it's proofread, and it's actually uh, uh, sound. So background uh, of the study. Uh, establish the context of the research. So it's very important for you because we need to have a context. Where are we researching uh, our, our study? Uh, what are we researching about? Uh, what are we going to focus about? So we need the context to our, to our study. And usually um, um, background forms the first section of the, of the research article, uh, of course, after the introduction. So after the introduction, then we expect to see your background to the study section. Then it serves to justify the need for conducting the study. So you don't need uh, to leave this section out. It's very important because we need to justify uh, the need. We need to justify the importance. We need to, uh, to, to provide the rationale for the study and the um, background to the study provide that rationale uh, so well and then it always summarizes uh, what the study aims 
uh, to achieve. So you see the, these four aims or the four reasons for a background to the study, they are very crucial uh, for you uh, to, to make sure that uh, your study uh, uh, from the onset, um, when we start our study, we are very uh, successful at the end of the day. Then what is the difference between your background to the study and the introduction? I have often seen people writing introduction and background of study as one heading, and it's very common in most in in in, in most department but that is um that is not a good approach anyway i, I won't call it um, i won't call it wrong but i would rather say it's not a good approach because there is a difference between the introduction uh, in the background of study and i have actually elaborated what is a uh, introduction in in video that i have posted uh, in, uh, in in in, uh, in week one and you need to go and listen to that video and try to write in an, an introduction using that guide and you will see that you will come out with the with a very nice uh, introduction then you dive to the background of the study so that it can help you so yes there's a difference between that it's important to know that the introduction and the background of said are distinct elements and serves uh, uh, two different uh, purposes. Uh, and well, introduction provides an overview of a specific research topic and touches upon key elements of the research proposal. If you remember what I had talked about into, into the introduction, that in the introduction it, it, it approaches uh, the, the, the topic, it approaches the, 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 the uh, your aims, your goal, it also approaches your 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 research problems and also the overview of of your study or overview of the rest of the paper. But with the background of the study, it's not more, it's not like that. A background of study actually uh, present a detailed uh, discussion of the existing literature in the field. Uh, and it identified the research, it identifies the research gap and how the research being done, say, and how the research you are going to, uh, how, the, how you are going to carry out uh, your, your, your research. So it's very important for you to know that that difference, that whenever we are talking of an introduction, uh, we are talking of uh, something that we want to, 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 to introduce or something that introduces our topic, our problems, and the and 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 the and the overall view of the paper. But when we talk of the background to the study, here we are now describing. Uh, uh, we are we are we are, we are presenting a, a detailed description of the existing literature in the field. And the, the 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 main goal is to identify the gaps that that we have. I know it's very difficult for 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 if you are hearing this for you to 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 conceptualize what I am actually uh, trying to say. But as time goes on, and I'm going to come back again with another episode trying to explain uh, some of these uh, issues uh, with also uh, some some examples. So how does it differ from the from the introduction? We still continue with that. So the introduction aims also to capture the reader's attention and the interest and provide a clear and concise uh, summary of the research, pro uh, research project. It typically begins with a general statement of the research problem and it then narrows down to the specific research questions. It may also include an overview of the research design, methodology, and the, and the, and the, and the scope. But the background to the topic, it outlines a historical, theoretical, and empirical background uh, that leads to the research questions. Uh, to the search question to highlight its importance. Uh, it typically offers an overview of the research field and may include a review of literature to highlight gaps, controversies, and limitation in the existing literature and to justify the need for further, for further researches. Um, then the other important thing that you can also uh, consider is the length of literature review and the length of the background to the study. They always differ. And the, in most cases, your introduction uh, should just occupy about, um, about half a page uh, or half a page or even less. If you see your introduction occupying about two pages, then you know that there's something that is, that is actually wrong. So that is also another thing that you can distinguish uh, your your background to the study and the introduction. Then where do we find it? Uh, of, of course, in, in, in most uh, cases, in most cases, uh, and I'm using in most cases because 
uh, universities, they differ, departments, they also differ. Some would tell you that we want the background to the study uh, in the first paragraph. But in this case, I would want the background to the study after, the, after our introduction so that it actually uh, makes a lot of, uh, a lot of, of, of sense uh, whenever uh, we, are, we are reading. Then how to structure the, the background of the study. It's very important for you to know how to, to structure uh, a, 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 to how to structure your your background to the study, and is very very important because in most times we, we 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 see that the background of the study is everywhere, and you can't even distinguish between background to, to the study. You can't even distinguish background to the study and introduction and the literature review in between. So it's very important for you to make sure that you structure it to one. The first thing, uh, uh, giving an overview of your study. It's very important. You need to give an overview of your study. It's kind of you are now taking some of the elements that you have uh, included in your introduction uh, to, 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 to come here uh, or to come in this section on the, on the background. Then number two, uh, you need to outline uh, you know, precisely uh, or concisely the historical development in Rhodesia that lead to the current problem. It's very important for you to learn this. When you start uh, to argue and you give, um, like you, you argue your point in a historical development manner or in a chronological manner, then you start seeing that your argument start to take shapes. So it's very important for you to learn that uh, trick of uh, trying to argue in a chronological way, uh, use the, 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 the dates, they tell us when it started, the date it started, the year it started, and you move with that, uh, with the progression of your, of your topic. It's very, it's very, it's very, actually, uh, very good. If the study is interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary, uh, describe how different disciplines are connected and what aspects each discipline will be studied. Because in, especially for PhD these days, we are encouraging transdisciplinary studies, whereby you link several disciplines together, uh, several disciplines together uh, to come out with solutions, to come out with the recommendations, to come out with policy uh, options, and, 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 and. So it's very important for you to make sure that you describe those different disciplines and how they are connected and what, what aspect of those disciplines that you have are brought together that will be uh, studied. Because I, I, I understand you are not going to be able to study everything uh, that you would want. The section should be uh, should be organized as so as uh, what is known about the broad uh, about the broad topic. What is it known about the broad topic? Say for example, you are talking about food insecurity. What is known about food insecurity? We know today that almost three million around the world are having problems with food uh, with nutrition uh, insecurity. For example, we know quite a big number of 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 of, of people are experiencing obesity. Uh, for example, in the countries. Uh, pumping a lot of money uh, you know to try and deal with the problem of a, of a person so try to uh, try to tell us what is known at a, at a broader topic um, and you narrow you, you narrow your your issue down then what are the gaps or missing link that needs to be to be to be addressed and the the gaps you can you on your own as you read your literature review you, you can identify the gaps uh, by just reading and you know that okay uh, we have got studies that we have got focused on on area one two three four but area five six seven has no one has, has not been addressed and that becomes a gap or you can even go to the uh, to the scholars uh, they will help you to identify gaps most of the scholars will tell you what has been studied and what has not been studied so it's very important for you to take note of that so that's how you can identify the gaps it's easy and then what is what is the significance of addressing those gaps? What do we benefit by addressing those gaps? Why should we address the, those gaps? What is the rationale? What are the importance of us addressing uh, the, 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 these gaps? So it's very important for you uh, to uh, to to uh, to come out or to try and answer those uh, those questions as as we go. And please take note that the background section uh, should provide the general information about the topic of your study. It's general information, general information, but it has to be linked to your study. Uh, it emphasizes the main aim. That's most important. Although we are saying it's very general, 
but it must in that uh, in that being general it must emphasize the main aims of your or the, the main aims of your study or the main aim of your study because i expect most that you have got only one aim and you have got several objectives uh, please ensure that you only discuss the main and relevant aspect of the study that leads to your aim it, this is very crucial don't just uh, go out there and bring in uh, thousands and thousands of books but they have got nothing to do with what you want to study. We want to see studies here that are linked, that are relevant to what you want to study, or that are linked uh, to your to you, to your aim. Um, and do not elaborate most of these studies. Do not go into depth. By elaborating, I mean uh, you don't tell us that this study has been done uh, in, in in South Africa uh, with these uh, 20 uh, participants, and this is what we, we that is now elaborating. So don't elaborate uh, these findings uh, in this section. We, elaboration you can do that in the literature. In the literature review, the the, pro, the background section should discuss your the findings only, um, what you have found uh, in that in, in those uh, studies, and in a chronological manner. Um, so it's very important for you to make sure that you you don't do that. You do that, and you don't also miss points uh, that needs to be uh, to be addressed. The background should be written as a summary of the interpretation of previous. Uh, research and what your study proposed uh, to accomplish. So what, what basically what we are saying here is we are saying when you go and read, you are going. To, it's it's like you are doing a mini survey, and the findings in that survey is what we expect you to write in the background of in the background to, to this study. So it's interesting. So it's just a mini. You are you are just, you are writing your your findings here, yeah. and it's, take it like that. That in the background of study you are writing your findings. So what it tells you is you need to read the literature. You can't, you can't just write background to the study after reading two books or after reading two or three books, you can't do that. You need to write at least four, four, four masters. I, I would rather take 10, I would say 10, but they must be relevant publications. Then for PhD, of course, I try to make sure that you go uh, to 20. It's very important for you to always to try and 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 make uh, more. Then you need to make the background engaging. Don't use passive language whenever you are writing uh, background to the study. And most students have got the problem of using passive language whenever they are writing uh, background to the study. Then it becomes so boring and. It, it, it does not interest the reader. You need to make sure that it becomes uh, in engaging. As the background includes a lot of information, uh, also it should become, uh, you know, it can become a long, a long drag, causing the reader to lose the interest. You need to know what to include uh, in the in the background uh, to the study. Don't include everything. That is why I say don't elaborate. You need just to come and summarize the findings. Uh, in the background of study, so that you don't make this thing uh, uh, too long. Uh, then ensure that the background is engaging uh, by trying to build a story around the central theme uh, of your of your research. Um, in this case, I talked about the nutrition, food and nutrition, or food insecurity. You can use food insecurity as your as your central theme, so that you build your argument around it around that uh, food insecurity. If you are studying COVID-19, you can use COVID-19 as, as a central theme. Then you try to build your background to the study around that uh, central theme. If you are studying uh, you know, crime uh, in, in, in the country, try to make that as a, as a central theme and build your, 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 your story around that, that central theme. Then you, it, it makes it a, a, a very interesting and very engaging. Um, the, the, there are people that are studying, I think, uh, um, you know, uh, very complex studies. So it's very important for you to know uh, which uh, central theme can you use uh, to, to build your story around. Because it's very difficult to come out with, with this uh, 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 central theme uh, of, your, of your study. But it's very important. If you can identify a good central theme uh, from the way to go, then your study is going to be easy very easy to write, very easy to go out there to collect your data, uh, very easy to, 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 to conclude. So it's very important for you to put more effort uh, whenever you are thinking of a central theme. Please, it's very important 
that think of a central theme that is uh, that you have got literature central theme that you have got a lot of publication uh, central theme that you have got uh, that you think that uh, you can actually develop your story around and make it uh, engaging ensure that the story adheres to the core idea and does not uh, digress uh, into the broader literature review we don't a lot of literature we don't want a lot of literature review yeah we should not do literature review you should not uh, you should not discuss uh, you should not go into literature review in the background to 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 the study uh, each idea should do, lead to the next so that readers are able to grasp with the story and the, themselves identify the gap that you that your study is going to address you know if you write it well uh, it's it, it is actually easier for people to know where you are, you are where you want to go even your supervisor can actually know and they can even help you to identify the gap in case at the last you fail to identify the gap if you develop your story well the supervisor uh, is good at that they can actually help you to identify the gap and make your life very 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 easy so it's very important to make sure that it, it's engaging and also you need to avoid a lot of or the common mistakes when you are writing at the background to the study that's one thing that we don't want a lot of mistakes a lot of type of errors a lot of issues are uh, in that you need to avoid those common uh, mistakes in writing do not write a background that is too long or too short and that is the mistake that most people does you want to write a background to the study that is two paragraphs or one paragraph that is too short or you want to write a background of study that you have got in, uh, three pages that is too long as well so you need to make sure that you balance between you need to focus on all important detail uh, but write uh, in a very in, in, in concisely don't make it too long and don't don't make it too short and don't make it uh, do not uh, your, your background should not be ambiguous and in in, in that way most students they, they they are very ambiguous they are not straight to the point they don't want to tell their story you need to learn to tell your story in the in, in a way that is clear in a way that uh, that people can understand uh, what you want to what you want to say in your mind i know it's a the, the, the biggest challenge that most students does uh, or that causes them to write ambigu ambiguously is because when they write the first draft, they want to take the first draft and send it to their supervisor. I can tell you this, that if you do that, then you will discover that your ideas will be very ambiguous. So whenever you are writing, try to write so many times, try to write uh, two, three uh, drafts. Uh, myself, I write up to seven drafts. I don't mind to write up to seven drafts because I know the last draft will have, will, will have my idea, will be able to, 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 to express my idea uh, so uh, clearly. Uh, so it's very important for you to do that. Do not uh, discuss unrelated things. Don't bring unrelated things for nothing. You are, discuss, you are discussing COVID-19 uh, and the, of a sudden, then we are now starting to see an accident. Uh, in that in that discussion, don't don't discuss unrelated things. If a thing is 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 caring and you want to uh, include it, try to find out uh, how is it connecting to your study, how is it connecting to your aim. If it is not connecting to your aim, uh, my advice to you is you need to ignore that. Don't bring it into that discussion. Just put it away and don't even entertain that. And be organized. Don't be disorganized. Most people, they are very disorganized. You need from the way they start writing. And, 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 and the, 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 the funny part, you are not even, you, know, you don't even uh, feel um, um, for yourself that what you want to submit to your supervisor is not uh, up to standard. It's, not, it's, it's disorganized. Your ideas are everywhere. You need to make sure that you, your, your, your ideas are organized are discussed in a chronological manner uh, that cannot and you are not confusing the reader you are not confusing your supervisor it's very important for you to write that and to make sure that you are writing clearly please um, you need to make sure that you get organized you organize your ideas in a very uh, uh, chronological uh, manner and how is the uh, background different from literature review. I, I emphasize that background to the study is not is not the same as the, as, as the literature review. Whenever you are writing a background to the study, please take note that you are just summarizing all the findings that you find uh, in the study uh, in your background to the study, and you try to organize that uh, in the in in a, under a central theme. Um, then many students find it very difficult to discern the difference between literature review and the background to study. I think I have explained that. That should not give you some issues now. So that whenever you're writing background to the study, 
you are just coming to present a summary of the findings that you have found in literature review that relates to your aim, that relates uh, to your topic. And the literature review, you are now going into depth now with that literature review. Um, you are now elaborating what happened, where, is it, where did it happen, where did they find those things, and, and, and all other stuff. So it's very important for you to know that difference. Literature review section, suppose background section. Yes, those two, they are, they are connected because most of the, uh, of the articles that you summarize or you summarize the findings are in the background to this, that we also expect to find them in your literature review as you, as you progress with your study. This section is more comprehensive and it thoroughly describes all the studies that you have mentioned in the background that I have said. It should, be also, it, sh it should also elaborate all the studies that form evidence uh, for, the, uh, for the present study and discuss the current trend. So that is, the, that is now, your, your, that is now your, your literature review. As I said, you need to elaborate them, uh, your studies in the literature review. We don't expect you to elaborate uh, your, the studies and the trends and everything uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the background to the study. And if you want to do that, if you want to do that, you need to make sure that you do it in a very clever way. You do it in a way that does not make your that does not make this background to study uh, very long. But make sure that you take note and you 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 you, you keep it short and uh, short and and, and and smart. All right. So write this section. You also need to do a thorough literature review uh, on different uh, studies that relates to the broader topic of your study. Don't attempt to go and write this uh, uh, this uh, background to that without doing a, a thorough literature review because otherwise what you are going to write and to, and what you are going to end up with is going to is going to be very different so you need to come to go and do literature review and i have emphasized that for for masters please try to do at least 10 and for for phd try to do at least 20 or even more but also make sure that the studies that you are reviewing are are really relevant that is why we call relevant literature review or related literature review. We are not just talking about literature review. We are not just talking about just reading books and just reading articles, but we are talking of relevancy and we are talking of relatedness. So following this, you should present a more focused survey. I talked about this one. It should be ideal to organize them uh, in, a th uh, in thematically and discuss them chronologically. Uh, so that readers are aware of the evolution and progress uh, in the in the study. Uh, in other words, uh, separate themes uh, themes should be separate themes should be discussed chronologically to highlight how research in those fields has progressed uh, over time. And this will highlight what the what has been done and what uh, what are the future direction that needs to be uh, to be worked upon. And the, how to write a background to the study. This is now very important. Now we are talking about writing the background to the study. And it's very important for you to make sure that this, you master this. Because this is skill, if you master this skill, if you are doing your masters and you master this skill, uh, believe me, when even when it comes to writing papers, uh, journal papers, you're not going to have a problem. Even when it comes to write your, to, to do your PhD, you're not going to have uh, issues if you master how to write a background of the study. So where well, there are different styles of writing the background of the study, it always helps you to have a clear plan uh, in place. So there are so many styles of writing background that I say that uh, and the, uh, the guidelines, university guidelines, uh, journal guidelines uh, are out there published. So you also need to make sure that you, if it's UNISA, if it's UJ, if it's VITS, you need to go, uh, University of Cape Town, Stellenbosch, you need to go and find out the guideline uh, that you have, uh, that uh, you have been provided on writing the background to the study. And then let us look on how to write a background uh, of, the, of, of, of the study. So the first thing is you need to identify the research problem. So don't forget, so everything that you do in a thesis, in a, in a dissertation, you need to know that they are linked one way or the other. There is a connection there. So from the, from the introduction, we talked about the research problem. Now here we are in the, in the problem statement again. Oh, we are, we are in, at the background uh, of this that we are all talking about the, the research uh, 
the research problem. So you need to, 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 to know that these things are linked one way or the other. So you need to begin the background by defining the research topic and highlighting the main issues or questions that the research, uh, the research aims to address. Um, this is not an introduction. Please, this is not an introduction, then confuse with the introduction. So some of the information that you have highlighted the intro, intro, introduction, we want to see them here. And don't forget that the introduction is giving an overview of the whole paper. So some of the things that you're going to see here, you're going to find them in the introduction. So that's what you need to do to find that, that, that research topic and also highlight the main issues or questions that the research uh, aims uh, to address. The research problem should be clear, precise, and relevant to the field of study. I know uh, this is uh, also a problem uh, you know, that we always face. We want to, to study uh, things uh, in uh, um, you know, topics uh, in other field and we want to bring them in another field and uh, at times they don't, they don't, they are, they are actually different. So it's very important for you to take note of that. Whenever you are coming with a, a research problem, it must be relevant to the, to the field of study where you are. Then it should be framed using simple, easy to understand language and it must be meaningful to intended audience. You don't use unnecessary jargons here. Don't use unnecessary wording uh, as well when you are writing the research problem. Try to make sure that it's, it's very clear uh, uh, to the, and easy to read and use the simplest English and the, the, that ever possible. When, even if you are in engineering, even if you are in mathematics, even if you are in, um, uh, you know, you know those, you can name those those areas that you think that you have got some difficult jargons. So make sure that even when you are there, your aim, your your research problem must be, you must use simple and easy to read language. That is that is the rule, and you can't take it away. Then the second thing you need to conduct a review of the available or related literature. I talk about that. Don't dive into literature review. Don't dive into writing a background study without conducting a, 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 a literature review, without reading um, the, the related uh, or the, uh, the, yes, the, the, the relevant literature, uh, review, literature uh, review. So it's very important for you to make sure that that is done. And because once you have done that, if you do a proper literature review and if you interact with the proper um, with proper articles, then you are setting a good uh, stage uh, for your study. You are, you are building a very good uh, foundation uh, for your study, uh, for the success of your study. Then address existing controversies and assumptions. There are so many things that will come as the controversies, as assumptions uh, in those. So you need to try and address those, uh, those issues. It is a good idea to acknowledge and clarify, and clarify existing claims and controversy regarding the subject of your, of your, of your research. There are so many uh, controversy uh, assumptions, even if uh, let's talk about COVID-19, unfortunately, you're going to talk about that. There are also so many uh, claims there. If you talk about GMO, there are so many claims there that are there, uh, like GMO causes cancer and all other stuff. So if you are studying uh, studies like, like, like GMO, you also need to make sure that you clarify some of those uh, controversies that are in your that are in your study. And the, the second thing, whenever you are writing, uh, present a relevance of the study. It is important to provide justification to the study, uh, a rationale to the study. In this section, is it relevant? How relevant is your study? Why should we carry this? Why should we carry this study? This is where the researcher explains why the study is important and what contribution it will make to the existing knowledge on the subject. Don't forget that you need to make sure that you highlight that. Although there is a section that we are going to talk about uh, uh, the relevance of the study, but you need to make sure that you highlight it in the background. Then when we came to that, you are just now mentioning, you are no longer discussing, but because most of that you have already discussed that. Highlighting a key concept and the theories and explaining them, team, themes and ideas that may uh, feel unfamiliar to the readers and make the background of study content more impactful. Uh, this is very important for people that are doing engineering because you come out with the terms uh, that, uh, that are not familiar with people. So it's this uh, background to the study is an opportunity for you uh, to, uh, to clarify those concepts and you know if there are things that you theories that you are using or your 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 
your your study is uh, is strongly rooted in a in a theory. Um, it's very important for you to make sure that you explain those theories or terms and, and some of the ideas that are very familiar. So you can make sure you use that opportunity in the background of your study. Don't leave uh, this uh, explaining key terms uh, that are unfamiliar to the last section where you define the terms. It's fine. When we get there, you're still going to define the terms, but we want to see those definitions in your background. Uh, to the to the information uh, as as you go is very important and so that the reader will understand what you mean by 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 certain terms and yes the the last thing uh, proofreading don't make a mistake of sending work that is not proofread you need to make sure that your work is proof okay? you proofread your work send your work uh, to proofreader send your work uh, to friends uh, send your work to your supervisor, to your peers, to make sure that they edit and and and, and incorporate their their feedback. It's very important for you to incorporate the feedback. If it does not make sense to you, chances that it do not make sense to someone is very high. So make sure that your your document that you have written, the background of that have written before you before you submit it to your supervisor, it must make sense to you. And the best way for it to make sense to you is by giving different people to read for you and you incorporate, um, you, you also incorporate what most people are going to say. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe. We want more subscribers. And don't forget, no to plagiarism. See you in the next video. Bye.